Taylor Swift hard launched Travis Kelsey in a TikTok with her parents, and fans loved it. The Kansas City Chiefs winning Super Bowl 58 on Sunday against the San Francisco 49ers was a big deal. So, too, was Taylor Swift posting her beau, Travis Kelsey, on social media for the first time. On Monday night, Swift posted a TikTok that featured Kelsey along with her parents, Scott and Andrea Swift, at a club in an after party in Vegas. She added the caption, It's a friends and family party they said. Bring your parents they said. In the video, she first pans to the Chiefs tight end, who sticks his tongue out at the camera, before showing her parents, who appear to be having a good time. The TikTok marks the first time Swift has posted Kelsey on her social media during their months-long relationship, though the two are no stranger to public displays of affection. Kelsey and Swift were also spotted dancing to some of her biggest hits, Love Story and You Belong With Me, in Vegas while celebrating the Chiefs' championship and Kelsey's third Super Bowl ring. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift share a behind-the-scenes look at their Super Bowl celebration. CNN Football season may be officially over, but Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift's good times continue. Thanks to social media, we were able to share in the fun after Kelsey's team the Kansas City Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl on Sunday. Swift treated her followers to a look behind the scenes of their celebration in a TikTok video at a Las Vegas club, where first Kelsey is seen partying. The words over the video read, It's a friends and family party they said. Bring your parents they said, as the scene shifted to show her dad, Scott Swift, taking a swig of a drink while sitting next to her mother, Andrea Swift. Accidentally going clubbing with your parents is something everyone should try at least once in their life, Taylor Swift's caption read. The views we got of Kelsey came from others. The Chainsmokers reportedly DJed at an after-party at Zook Nightclub at Resorts World in Las Vegas. They shared a video on TikTok showing Kelsey dancing and singing along to Swift's 2008 hit, You Belong With Me. Kelsey is seen in the video in the DJ booth with the Chainsmokers. The football player is shown first appearing to be searching for someone in the crowd before singing in the video, Are You In Love With Me? As he points to himself before singing the lyrics, You Belong With Me? Drew Taggart of the Chainsmokers ends up embracing Kelsey. According to the caption on the TikTok, he said to him, I didn't know if I should play it or not. Moved a song up in the set list for the occasion, the caption ready, adding, worth it. Patrick Mahomes reveals which Taylor Swift song he sings in the shower. Patrick Mahomes is a Swiftie through and through. Following the Kansas City Chiefs' big win at the 2024 Super Bowl Sunday night, the famed quarterback participated in a lightning speed Q&A from Disneyland about his life. What's the last song you sang in the shower? An ESPN interviewer asked Mahomes Monday. Love Story by Taylor Swift, he responded after taking a second long pause to ponder. The NFL star, 28, also revealed that he has more than 300 unread text messages since defeating the San Francisco 49ers. So, I need to catch up, he quipped. Swifties flooded the comments section to praise Mahomes for giving his teammate Travis Kelsey's girlfriend's 2008 hit a shout-out. A love story by Taylor Swift, commented one TikTok user. Mahomes confirms Swifty status, added another. One viewer pointed out that the QB must have had, love story, stuck in his head from one of his team's various Super Bowl afterparties in Las Vegas. Video showed Kelsey and Swift, both 34, dancing and kissing while a techno version of the song blasted throughout XS nightclub at the Wynn Hotel following the big game. The pair were all smiles as they celebrated the Chiefs' back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins, having defeated the 49ers 25-22 in overtime this year. It was a big night for the pop star's music catalog, as the tight end also found himself belting out her hit, You Belong With Me, at Zook nightclub as they pointed at each other from across the packed room. The couple, who have been dating since the summer, looked completely loved up throughout the night despite her parents, Andrea and Scott Swift, hilariously standing nearby. Accidentally going clubbing with your parents is something everyone should try at least once in their life, Swift captioned a TikTok video Monday. Fans went wild over the fact that the White Horse singer had finally posted Kelsey on one of her social media accounts. That's her first relationship to be this public, one fan gushed. She's so in love, so happy for her. Taylor with the hard launch, another chimed in. 
while a third added, her first time posting anything with Trav in it, I love them. Kansas City braces for possible Taylor Swift appearance at Chiefs Parade, report. Taylor Swift's attendance at Super Bowl 58 was one of the biggest unknowns leading up to the big game in Las Vegas on Sunday night. Now, her presence at the Kansas City Chiefs Parade on Wednesday is the next. Swift, 34, performed on her Eras Tour in Japan the day before the Chiefs took on the San Francisco 49ers in Las Vegas. Still, she appeared alongside Travis Kelsey's family at Allegiant Stadium to watch the star tight end win his third Super Bowl ring. The couple celebrated back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles alongside Kelsey's teammates, including quarterback Patrick Mahomes and his wife Brittany Mahomes. Now, many are wondering if the Grammy Award-winning artist will continue the celebrations on Wednesday at the Chiefs Parade. Kansas City manager Brian Platt told KCUR that they are bracing for any possibility when it comes to security measures being taken, as the possibility of Swift's attendance will surely draw in an even larger crowd. That's gonna be a whole second level of security issues that we have to deal with, the crowds and all that sort of thing, he told the station. So we are more than ready. We have no concerns with our safety protocols and what we're doing to make sure that the route will be free of any issues. Platt also hinted to the station that they may have told Swift's team that her presence might be too much for the city's security to deal with on their own. I can't confirm or deny, but we might have already told that to her team, just to keep everybody safe and make things a little bit easier for us. Swift's next show on the tour will be on Friday in Melbourne, Australia, giving the international pop sensation plenty of time to make an appearance in Kansas City. Taylor Swift just dropped a rare TikTok from her night partying with Travis Kelsey. As you may or may not have noticed, Taylor Swift spent Sunday night celebrating the Chiefs' Super Bowl win at a giant after party. And guess she saw all the footage and said, underscore, Sue, underscore, because she went ahead and posted her own video to TikTok. Which she captioned, accidentally going clubbing with your parents is something everyone should try at least once in their life, and, it's a friends and family party they said. Bring your parents they said. Cut to Travis sticking out his tongue and footage of Scott and Andrea Swift sitting in a corner. This is the first time Taylor has posted Travis on any of her social media accounts, so definitely a big moment. Though they're pretty public about their relationship at this point, considering that on Sunday alone they kissed at the Super Bowl in front of a live audience of millions, and then spent the evening dancing and kissing to love story. Basically they're living out a Cinderella story in real life. Reliving a Cinderella story with Travis and Taylor Swift pic.twitter.com slash n0jl9sagai6. Becca Hibiscus, at Becca710, September 25, 2023 So, what's next for these two? Taylor appears to have flow back to Los Angeles from Las Vegas, while Travis is presumably celebrating with his team for a few more days. Taylor is then expected in Melbourne on February 16 for the Eras Tour, and there's speculation that Travis will be joining her in Australia now that he's finally made it to the off-season and has some free time on his hands. Sue, yeah, stay tuned. Oh, and if you missed their club kiss. Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey celebrate Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. A look back at their relationship. It's a love story, baby, just say, yes. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have been dating since at least September 2023, when the anti-hero singer first attended a Kansas City Chiefs game to cheer on the tight end. The appearance broke the internet and came after months of dating rumors. Since then, Swift has become a fixture in suites and on TV screens, having attended more than 10 Chiefs games throughout the 2023-2024 season. Travis Kelsey has returned the favor by traveling for an Eras Tour concert in Argentina. After the Chiefs AFC Championship victory, when Travis Kelsey and Swift shared a kiss on the field, the tight end and his team went on to win the 2024 Super Bowl on February 11, resulting in a sweet, victorious moment between the lovebirds. Following the Chiefs' win against the San Francisco 49ers in overtime, a huge celebration filled the field, after Swift and Travis Kelsey's mom, Donna Kelsey, held on to each other as they listened to Travis Kelsey and others make speeches after the win, Swift reunited with her boyfriend and they embraced one another while sharing several celebratory kisses. How did they get here? Here's a detailed timeline of their relationship up to this point. May 12, 2023. Taylor Swift says she's an Eagles fan. 
Taylor Swift, who was born in Pennsylvania, released the song, Gold Rush, in 2020, which features the lyrics, My Eagles T-shirt hanging from the door. During her May 12 Philadelphia stop on the Eras Tour, Swift cleared up speculation about the lyrics by revealing that she was referring to the NFL team, not the Hotel California band. Guys, like, come on. I'm from Philly. Of course it's the team, she said on stage in a video shared by the NFL. In February, the Eagles lost to the Kansas City Chiefs at the 2023 Super Bowl. The game made headlines for being the first time brothers played against each other in the championship game. Enter. Travis Kelsey. July 8, 2023. Travis Kelsey attends, Eras Tour, stop in Kansas City. Travis Kelsey, on the heels of his Super Bowl victory over brother Jason Kelsey, attended one of Swift's, Eras Tour, concerts like millions of fans in the summer of 2023. But while Swifties were looking forward to hearing some of the musician's biggest hits, Travis Kelsey arrived with a plan to get Swift's attention. The athlete shared on the July 26 episode of the New Heights podcast, which he co-hosts with his brother, that he created a friendship bracelet with his phone number and wanted to give it to Swift at one of her Arrowhead Stadium shows in Kansas City. I was disappointed that she doesn't talk before or after her shows because she has to save her voice for the 44 songs that she sings. So I was a little butthurt I didn't get to hand her one of the bracelets I made for her, Travis Kelsey explained on the podcast July 26. He was bummed but still appreciated Swift's impressive performance. She doesn't meet anybody or at least she didn't want to meet me, so I took it personal. But it was an unbelievable show, he said. Jason Kelsey chimed in and joked, she probably just hasn't gotten over the Super Bowl yet. She's a big Eagles fan, so maybe she just made something up and just didn't want to talk to you. Travis Kelsey reflected on this podcast shoutout at a February 7 press conference ahead of the 2024 Super Bowl, revealing that he never thought it would have landed. I didn't even think I would have gotten a response from her, he said. August 2, 2023. Travis Kelsey is asked about Taylor Swift by a reporter. NFL Network reporter Andrew Siciliano in an August 2 interview asked the Chiefs tight end about the pop star. As soon as Siciliano mentioned the anti-hero singer's name in the video, Travis Kelsey started laughing. The journalist then started to ask about his previous attempt to get Swift's attention. I said what I said, Travis Kelsey replied, and I meant what I said when I said it. He continued, you know, what? It is what it is. I'm not going to talk about my personal life. I know what you writers want to hear, and you want to hear more about that, and I'm not going to give you anything. Siciliano pressed on, wondering if Swift reached out to Travis Kelsey. And that's going to wrap it up here at NFL training camp, he playfully said before the clip ended, skirting the question. Late August 2023, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift hang out in New York. Travis Kelsey and Swift hung out in New York more than a month before Swift attended the Chiefs-Bears game September 24, a source close to the situation told today, meaning they linked up sometime before the end of August. August 31, 2023, Jason Kelsey teases Travis Kelsey for his mustache, with a reference to Taylor Swift. Travis Kelsey discussed his decision to bring back a mustache during the Chiefs training camp on the season 2 premiere of his podcast, New Heights, which came out August 31, 2023. He said he has styled his facial hair that way every training camp for the past few years to imitate his coach. Have you found out what Taylor Swift thinks of your mustache? Jason Kelsey cheekily asked, likely poking fun of his brother's famous failed attempt to give her a friendship bracelet during her Kansas City stop on the Eras Tour in July. Yeah, we're not going to bring up Taylor Swift in this episode, but something tells me she's going to like it, Travis Kelsey responded with a smirk. September 15, 2023. Jason Kelsey addresses dating rumors involving brother Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. In September, two months after Travis Kelsey said he tried to make a move on Swift, the dating rumors stayed strong, and Travis Kelsey's brother, Philadelphia Eagles center Jason Kelsey, weighed in on several occasions. After Philadelphia defeated the Minnesota Vikings on September 14, analyst and retired NFL star Tony Gonzalez unexpectedly referenced Swift in an interview with Jason Kelsey and Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. He couched the question by saying his 15-year-old daughter is a big fan of a certain pop star.
You have a family member, a brother, and I've been hearing rumors, can you comment? He asked Jason Kelsey. I've seen these rumors, the Jason Kelsey responded, I cannot comment. He added, ever since, catching Kelsey, everybody's been infatuated with Travis's love life, so I don't really know what's going on there. I know Trav is having fun and we'll see what happens with whoever he ends up with, before laughing. Travis Kelsey's search for love was documented on the E! reality series, Catching Kelsey, in 2016. Tony kind of blindsided me with that question on Thursday night, he said. It's hard to answer because I don't really know a lot about what's happening with Travis's love life. His business is his business. I stay out of that world. But having said that, I think he's doing great. I think it's all 100% true. I hope that this s goes a mile. September 17, 2023. Travis Kelsey's dating life becomes the talk of the NFL. Travis Kelsey's public attempt at courting Swift stoked rumors that the two might be romantically linked. As a result, NFL commentators took every opportunity to link the pair together, even while Travis Kelsey was playing on the field. Touchdown, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey finds a blank space for the score, commentator Ian Eagle said during the Kansas City Chiefs game against the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday, September 18, making a reference to Swift's song, Blank Space. I faced down Taylor Swift's legal wrath, and one how a mouse might feel going up against Godzilla is, I imagine, how Jack Sweeney feels right now. Sweeney, a third-year college student at the University of Central Florida, received a cease and desist letter from pop star Taylor Swift's legal team in December. Sweeney came into the crosshairs of Swift's attorney because of his penchant for mining publicly available air traffic data and using it to track various celebrities' private jets then posting that information on public social media accounts. Swift, evidently, did not like this trick. And now they have bad blood, to say the least. As someone who got the same treatment from Tay Tay. Jack, welcome to the club. You're not alone. And Taylor's favored legal tactic, the cease and desist order, is a tired, hack tactic, not something to fear, typically. Back in 2017, Swift sent a, legally farcical, cease and desist letter to me, too, over a blog post I wrote. She, or her legal team, rather, backed down after being publicly shamed by numerous bloggers and magazines. And once the smoke cleared, I have to admit that it kind of helped my career as an attorney. Let me explain. Back in 2017, I was a year post-law school, waiting for bar results and unsure of where my pending license and career would take me. I'd written a short piece of criticism of Taylor's weird politics for a small blog, Pop Front, I'd started with a few friends. Younger people might not remember this, but Taylor Swift used to be kind of apolitical. This seemed like a conscious PR strategy. Earlier in her career, she had more of a country flair to her, and likely did not want to alienate those right-leaning fans. I thought it was weird that so many alt-right types seemed to idolize her as an Aryan goddess, and equally weird that she didn't seem like she was doing anything to stop them. So I wrote a blog about it under the headline, Swiftly to the Alt-Right. Taylor Swift subtly gets the lowercase, KKK, information, and then forgot all about it. I faced down Taylor Swift's legal wrath, and one photo illustration by Thomas Levinson, The Daily Beast, Getty. How a mouse might feel going up against Godzilla is, I imagine, how Jack Sweeney feels right now. Sweeney, a third-year college student at the University of Central Florida, received a cease and desist letter from pop star Taylor Swift's legal team in December. Sweeney came into the crosshairs of Swift's attorney because of his penchant for mining publicly available air traffic data and using it to track various celebrities' private jets, then posting that information on public social media accounts. Swift, evidently, did not like this trick. And now they have bad blood, to say the least. As someone who got the same treatment from Tay Tay. Jack, welcome to the club. You're not alone. And Taylor's favored legal tactic, the cease and desist order, is a tired, hack tactic, not something to fear, typically. Back in 2017, Swift sent a, legally farcical, cease and desist letter to me, too, over a blog post I wrote. She, or her legal team, rather, backed down after being publicly shamed by numerous bloggers and magazines. And once the smoke cleared, I have to admit that it kind of helped my career as an attorney. Fox News is scared as hell of Taylor Swift endorsing Biden. Justin Barragona let me explain. 
Back in 2017, I was a year post law school, waiting for bar results and unsure of where my pending license and career would take me. I'd written a short piece of criticism of Taylor's weird politics for a small blog, Pop Front, I'd started with a few friends. Younger people might not remember this, but Taylor Swift used to be kind of apolitical. This seemed like a conscious PR strategy. Earlier in her career, she had more of a country flair to her, and likely did not want to alienate those right-leaning fans. I thought it was weird that so many alt-right types seemed to idolize her as an Aryan goddess, and equally weird that she didn't seem like she was doing anything to stop them. So I wrote a blog about it under the headline, Swiftly to the Alt-Right. Taylor Swift subtly gets the lowercase, KKK, information, and then forgot all about it. Months later, when I received Taylor's letter via email, I honestly did not think it was real. I figured there was no way that I could have possibly ended up on Taylor Swift's radar. But somehow I did. Swift's attorneys were out there trying to shut down tiny blogs like mine with only a few thousand readers a month. But because of my law background, I knew that I had freedom of speech and thus had no reason to take down my blog article. And my first thought was to reach out to the American Civil Liberties Union, who agreed to represent me for free, and put out a sassy press release full of references to Swift's songs. Not in her wildest dreams can Ms. Swift use copyright law to suppress this exposure of a threat to constitutionally protected speech, ACLU attorney Matt Cagle wrote at the time. The media and the public loved it, and ate it up. The reason, I think, is that just about everyone identified with the David vs. Goliath narrative. Well, everyone except the Goliaths. Interview requests pour in about the story, from CNN to Salon to Spin to Fox News, whom I turned down, I was hesitant to speak out at first, but I felt that commenting on the situation was part of fighting a greater injustice. When I got my first job as an associate, the partners at my firm were impressed that I had the guts to go up against one of the most famous and influential people in the world to stand up for free speech. Later, a constitutional law professor asked me to give a guest lecture for her class. I figured that the story would fade away, but online, it lingered. Likewise, other journalists and people in the entertainment industry reached out to me on Twitter with similar stories of receiving cease and desist letters, fearful of how it could change their lives or hurt their careers. After reading those stories, I felt even more strongly that the wealthy and powerful cannot get away with using lawyers to frighten and bully journalists. There was one positive outcome from the whole saga. After Swift was roundly condemned for sending me that frivolous letter, she did start proclaiming her political stances and urging people to vote. I can't see into Swift's mind and know for sure whether I was the catalyst, but her political apathy was one of the points that I raised in my article. Swift is one of the most followed people on social media with a huge voice, and, until recently, carbon footprint. She can and should use her platform to push for social change, particularly given that she is a role model for many children and teens. It is unfortunate that she had to be shamed into taking a political stance, and that when given the opportunity for accountability and reflection, she chooses to go on the offensive with her legal team. I am not sure if these are truly her calls, but it reflects poorly on her and confirms her enormous levels of entitlement and privilege. But back to Jack Sweeney. Admittedly, his situation is a little different from mine in that he's no stranger to pissing off celebrities with his jet-tracking widgets. Previously, he infuriated Elon Musk by tracking his private jet as he zipped around the world. Musk then suspended him from X for that offense, and a new book suggests it may have been the catalyst for him to buy Twitter. But Swift, unlike Musk, doesn't own any social media companies and cannot as easily hide someone else's social media posts. And finally, Sweeney should know that Swift has an odd penchant for writing songs about little details in her life, sometimes obscured through a few layers of analogy and metaphor. After being publicly harangued over her efforts to silence a mild-mannered blogger, Swift called her next album, Reputation. My reputation's never been worse, she crooned on the single, Delicate. I always wondered if the song, or the album, was maybe just a teensy bit about what happened with me or the ACLU. Okay, probably not, but it's something to laugh about, at least. And Sweeney might find himself asking the same question when there's a song on tortured poets department about her private jet.